Hey all, check it out, we're back with our Tesla Model X and we're back with some new software updates. You guys probably know by now that Tesla pushes these over the year updates which give you new functionality, new features and new games and in this video, we're going over all the cool stuff in version 10.2. Now the biggest release is the driving visualization improvements. Driving visualization is actually this little screen right here in the center console and this shows you things like the lanes, other vehicles, and now it's supposed to go a step further. So if we look here, the driving visualization can now display additional objects which include stoplights, stop signs, and select road markings. And it says stoplight and stop sign visualizations are not a substitute for an attentive driver and will not stop the car. But basically what this is doing is previewing full self-driving capability in the Tesla vehicle. So the computer now is gonna show me exactly what it thinks it sees, and that's really cool. So in theory, if I come up to a stop sign, it should display the stop sign. So in version 10.2, we have to turn on our driving visualization. So here's what we're gonna do here in the screen. I'm gonna go into the car controls, select autopilot, and then full self-driving preview. Let's turn that on. And it says, you know, it will see the stop lights and the stop signs, but it won't actually stop. It's not a substitute for an attentive driver. So do we want to see the preview? Sure, let's give it a whirl. All right, first test is gonna be a stop sign. Now we're in this little business park. And one of the previous releases was the ability for the car to see cones. And it just saw a phantom cone there, which doesn't ex actually exist, but you can see, look at that. Even right there, we're probably 200 meters from the stop sign, you can actually see it there on the screen. And as we get closer and closer, yeah, that's pretty cool. It obviously doesn't say stop on the actual sign. And there you can actually see a line where it wants you to stop on the road. Rad, okay, so stop sign was an easy win. Let's give a stoplight a whirl. So here we go, coming up to a red light. This red light has a left turn lane, a right turn lane, and a straight lane. And we're gonna go straight. So there you can see it, probably 200 feet away. You can see the car in the left turn lane, and you can even see that it's red. So just turn green, and it just turned green there on the Tesla preview as well. It is seeing a bunch of cones that just simply aren't there. So I don't know if you see that in the display, there's like three or four cones that just keep popping up. Uh, that's been an issue we've noticed. <laughs> it's just these phantom cones. Uh, but you know, Tesla is always working on improvements, so hopefully those will start to go away. Now here's another question. Here comes a crosswalk. I'm curious if it will recognize the crosswalk as we get near. Nope, it doesn't see the crosswalk. So that's kind of a fail. Uh, and we are getting a lot of phantom cones, but the, the stoplight thing was cool. And you can even see there, that's another one that we get a lot of trash cans. So everything that's not a cone um, is a trash can. So <laughs> uh, utility boxes or fire hydrants, oftentimes they just show up as trash cans. So the system is cool. I like having that, that stoplight functionality, but I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how I would trust this car with my life given this current visualization. Now, this new feature will actually even see little turn arrows. So for example, there's a right turn. It is getting more and more advanced, which is cool, but you know, still doesn't really see yield signs, still doesn't see merge signs. It's all kind of based off road markings. Here comes a railroad crossing. I wonder if it'll see the X um, before the railroad crossing here. And nope, it sees them as turn lanes. There it goes, X, X. Okay, so it did work, it took a little while, but it did figure it out. One of the other things they did with this update is kind of fix the voice command. So if we look at the screen here, they kind of rebuilt this system to understand natural language. You don't have to think about what you're saying really to get it to do something. It should understand different commands no matter how you say it. So I'll try one of these out. Set the temperature to 71 degrees. Temperature set to 71 degrees, worked like a charm. Let's try another one. Show me the rear camera. And just like that, the rear camera has popped up. Turn on the heated steering wheel. And it said failed to turn on the heated steering wheel, but if we look, it actually did it. So a little bit of a bug there. That's kind of happening every time, but overall the system works pretty well. 
So one of the other improvements in this update is the adaptive suspension damping. Of course this car has air suspension and we've had a couple different uh, suspension modes, but now in 10.2 there's three kind of new ones. So, well, two. Sport is the same, but we now have Comfort and Auto. Auto replaces the standard, so it's supposed to be more responsive and dynamic. But the new one is Comfort, which should give it a very kind of cushy ride. So we've got a stretch of really rough road, and we're going to see if there's a difference. Now we're going to go into the existing suspension setting that's not new and that of course is sport so this should be kind of the firmest, the hardest. Uh, normal suspension height and then let's head down the road and we'll use our little hula girl here to see what the ride quality is like. I can tell you immediately off the bat it is a, a fairly firm ride when you dial it into sport uh, and it does seem to minimize you know body roll. Here are some potholes and some sewers and you can really see that she does flap around a pretty decent amount. It's going to get a little bit even rougher up here. It's not uncomfortable, it's not unbearable, but it certainly is not very cushy. So same speed, same road, let's go into comfort and see if we're comfortable. Most importantly, let's see if our little hula girl here is comfortable. So, so far, it doesn't look all that different. Here are those little potholes and, oh, that was good and the sewers there, and you can see she's not kind of as aggressive in her dancing, it's more kind of gentle and controlled. There's a new mode called Camp Mode, which I think is really cool. If we go into the release notes and scroll down, you can now maintain airflow, temperature, interior lighting, and play music, power devices when Camp Mode is enabled. So if we go into the climate settings, we can see we now have Camp Mode right here, turn that on and basically the radio will still work, we'll still have all of our climate controls, the USB ports will still work so you can charge up your phone, and that is perfect for car camping. If you don't have a trailer, you just want to spend the night in your car, that's the perfect way to stay comfortable doing it. It will stay in camp mode until the car reaches 20%. Once you get down to 20%, it will turn off camp mode to conserve battery, and also sentry mode is disabled in camp mode, so if you're getting out of the car, maybe to go make a campfire or something, you're not going to be starting recording a videos of the exterior of the car. They've also made a slight change to Tesla theater, so if we go into the release notes and scroll down, you can see that you can now watch Twitch, that's pretty much all they added. So if we go into this menu here, go into entertainment and then theater, we now have Twitch, so we can watch some live streams while we're charging up the car pretty easily, you just have one more site to choose from. One of the cool things about Teslas is they have cameras all over themselves, in the front, in the sides, in the rear, and you can use them in a kind of dash cam sort of way. But one of the new things in this update is a save dash cam clip on honk. So what that means, when I honk the horn on the Tesla, it should save a dash cam clip so I can go back and look at that event later on. So here's how it works. I have a little USB thumb drive here formatted for the Tesla, and then I just plug it in right down here into one of these USBs. And it should start flashing, and then solid red light. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is go here into the infotainment, and then let's go safety and security, scroll down to save clips on honk. Okay, so here's how this works. You can see up here we have a little record icon, and the Tesla basically records continuously for an hour, at which point it'll start to overwrite the clips it just recorded. Now I can manually save the previous 10 minutes by just clicking that little button there, or I believe how this new system works, if I honk, it will actually save uh, that current event as well. So I'm gonna go into drive here, and uh, Alex is our little stunt man. Oh no, honk! Yep, I honked. <laughs> and then, let's see what this little guy does up here. So there you can see, that little beep means, I think it saves that clip, so it's not gonna overwrite that clip of the honk, it's just gonna save that permanently to my little drive. Let's plug it into the computer and see what that looks like. So what you have to do is basically format the drive correctly, create a little folder called Tesla Clam, Tesla Cam, not Clam, and then it creates two little additional folders automatically, Save Clips and Recent Clips. So let's go into our Save Clips. Here are all of our Save Clips, but this last one was the one where I honked the horn, and sure enough, we have four different clips in here, and this is where our uncautious pedestrian decided to just walk out in front of the car. There we go. <laughs> so you can see by honking the horn, it did actually save the clips. We also have different angles, so we could have seen it from the side, for example, or the back. Let's see, where's the rear view camera? Yeah, so a lot of options um, 
And that's a pretty cool thing, so looks like it worked, and now we know that Alex is stupid for walking out in front of silent electric cars. They've also added a few new games to the arcade section, so you can see down here there's now Stardew Valley and Backgammon. Go into the entertainment tab and arcade. We have Stardew Valley right there, and if you're sitting with someone at the Tesla Supercharger, maybe you have someone in your passenger seat and you want to play a two-player game, you're both entertained right there with Backgammon. Clearly we're pros <laughs> with this, Alex. Why did you put that on my side? Can I do that to you? I was just Ooh, putting it where it let oh, me put nope. it. It like grays it out. Like that one can go there. Oh, you can only put it there. Yeah. Another thing they added to this little entertainment menu is tracks. So if we go into that little icon of a piano, it might give you an idea of what we're gonna look at. But maybe you're getting tired of the radio stations in the Tesla, you wanna make some of your own music. Here's the way to do it right here. So we have a beat laid out there. We can hit play and then go to our synth bass. I'm no musician, but can make whatever sounds you want there, add some drum beats or guitar, whatever you want. So distorted guitar right there. You can save them and it's pretty much like GarageBand for your Tesla. Also in this update is some changes to how the driver profiles work. So there's more navigation settings. They now save settings such as the volume levels and traffic display settings in your specific driver profile. And there's also now support for Danish. So there you go guys, there's a little sneak peek into what has changed in version 10.2 on our Tesla Model X. I really liked seeing the full self-driving visualization preview. Gives you a little sneak peek into what we can expect out of our Teslas in the future. Thanks for watching, don't forget to go back to tflcar.com for more news views and real world Tesla reviews.